Greetings, dear learner. My name is Joseph Jude Agaba, and I'll be your biology teacher today. Our lesson will be on the topic of cells, and we'll study this lesson together with my colleague, Mili, on sign language from the Uganda Sign Language Society. Before we begin, have you ever asked yourself what cells are? Well, you're correct. Cells are the tiny building blocks of life that make up living organisms. Because they are very tiny, we cannot see the cells using our unaided eyes. So how are we able to see those cells? We need an instrument. Can you try and tell us or think about what that instrument is? Very good. That instrument is called a microscope. You might have seen a microscope at school, in your laboratories, or when you visit health facilities. The microscope is an instrument that makes very tiny objects appear much larger than they actually are. Our lesson today will be about animal cells. Because we don't have a microscope, we are going to use a chicken egg. Right, we are going to use a chicken egg. Did you know that a chicken egg is actually an animal cell? Yes, it is. We'll use the egg to help us find out the different parts of an animal cell. Today, we'll also look at the functions of the parts of the cell that we're going to look at. Okay, let's get right into it. I'd like for you to get yourself prepared with a raw egg and a clear white plate or saucer. How are we going to use these materials? I would like you to crack the egg open from the bigger end of the egg, that is the air space. You remember the air space that you learned in primary school? Good. Crack the egg open and carefully drop the contents of the egg onto the white plate. I hope we've done that. We are now ready to observe the egg. I know it looks very good, but we'll have to eat it after this lesson. Now, look at your egg very carefully. I would like you to observe the layers of the egg. I would also like you to look at the position of those different layers and the size of those layers. Can you tell me what you've seen? Wonderful. You should have been able to see three layers. There is a thin outer layer that is almost transparent. It's very clear. You should have also been able to see a big layer that's next to the thin outer layer. And finally, you should have been able to see the central or the middle layer of the egg. Usually it is yellow in color, but that might change, depend on the egg. So from your plate, you ought to have seen three layers, the thin outer layer, the big layer after the outer layer, and the inner layer in the center. Now we are also going to look at an actual animal cell as, it's, as is seen under a microscope. 
Do you see that image there? Do you notice the number of layers for the animal cell? Is it similar to that that you saw in the egg cell? Correct. The animal cell also has three layers. We have an outer layer, then we have a layer after that outer layer, and then we have an inner layer. Would you like to know those parts? I'm sure you'd really like to know those parts. So, for the animal cell, the outer layer is called the cytoplasm. Can you say that after me? Cytoplasm. Next, the layer after just surrounding the cytoplasm. Can I repeat this again? The layer surrounding the cytoplasm, which is the thinner outer layer, is called the cell membrane. Can we say that together? It is the cell membrane. The cell membrane surrounds the cytoplasm. And in the middle, at the center of the cell, is a part that we call a nucleus. Very good. Can we say together? Nucleus. So, an animal cell has three main parts. Could you repeat them? Part one is the cytoplasm. The other part, the outer part, the thin outer part, is the cell membrane. And then the inner part is the nucleus. In primary school, you learnt about the parts of an egg and they had different names. For our lesson today, we use the egg just to show us the three layers, but the names of the parts of the egg are different. I would like you to take note of that. Now that we know the names of the parts, would we like to go ahead and find out the functions of those parts? How are we going to do that? Let's imagine that you are living at a farm homestead. A farm homestead has a fence, a very big fence. The fence surrounds the gardens and the animals. And you also have the farmhouse where the people live in that homestead. So we have a fence. Inside the fence are gardens and uh, the places where the animals live. And then we have the family house. I would like for you and I to think about the functions of those three things. Think about the functions of the fence. Think about the functions of the gardens and think about the house or the family in that farm. What is the function of the fence? The fence is meant to keep intruders from coming into the farm homestead. Is that all? No. The fence can also prevent the animals in the farm from leaving or escaping outside the farm. Good. What do you think is the function of the gardens and the animals in the farm homestead? Correct. The garden is where the food grows. The gardens are where the animals get food. And eventually, the animals and plants in the garden provide food for the people who live at the farm. And where do those people live? 
Very true. They live in the house that is found inside the farm. Do you think the garden or the crops can grow without the help of the people? Do you think the animals can grow without people around? I think they would not grow very well. And so, in the farmhouse, you need to have people that will help to manage the growth of the plants and animals in the farm. So where is this leading us to? If we go back and take a look at our animal cell, just like you saw the farmhouse, we can relate the fence to a certain part of the animal cell. What part do you think carries out the same function as a fence in the animal cell? Brilliant response. It is the cell membrane. The cell membrane controls what enters and leaves the animal cell. So its function is similar to that of the fence. How about the garden and the animals in the garden? Which part of the animal cell do you think is represented by those? Correct, it is the cytoplasm. And so, what do we think is the function of the cytoplasm? The cytoplasm is where all the activities that take place in the cell. That's the site where these activities take place. And what could those activities be? We will get to that just in the next, after understanding the part of the next part of the animal cell. The nucleus is similar to the house in the farm and it controls all the activities that take place within the cell. What are those activities? If you remember what you studied in primary school, and all living things have certain characteristics. There are several processes that all living things display. Those are the activities that take place within the cell. So the nucleus controls all those activities. So let's go this, through this together. We have three main parts, the cell membrane, the cytoplasm, and the nucleus. What are the functions of those parts? Can you go through them together? Cell membrane. The cell membrane controls what enters and leaves the cell. What about the cytoplasm? The cytoplasm is where all activities within the cell take place. And finally, the nucleus. The nucleus controls the activities that take place within the cell. Now that we have looked at the parts and their functions, allow me to ask you a few questions. What do we call the thin layer surrounding the contents of the cell, which allows substances to enter and leave the cell? Brilliant answer. That is the cell membrane. Let's move on to the next question. What do you call the liquid within the cell where life processes take place? True, that is the cytoplasm. How about the central part of the cell that controls all chemical activities within the cell? That is the nucleus. Very correct. Can you give me two examples of activities that are controlled within the cell? Good. You remember your biology very well. 
processes like excretion and respiration take place within the cell. You have been a very wonderful class today and we have come to the end of our lesson. I would like to remind you that we are in a very dangerous pandemic that is Corona and uh, we need to stay home, we need to stay safe, wash our hands regularly and avoid touching our eyes, ears, mouth and nose. Till next time, we'll see you again. Thank you very much. Thank you.